Hello, this is a video tutorial solution for BIOM 9640, Biomedical Instrumentation, Week 3 uh, tutorial. I'm going to do question 1 in this video. Uh, the circuit we have is drawn here. It's a voltage supply, a sinusoidal voltage supply in parallel with resistor, capacitor and inductor. Uh, let's write down from the question some of the values of these. So the voltage is in the time domain we well actually that's the first question what is the voltage so what we do know is the inductor is L equal to 8 millihenries so 10 to minus 3 uh, the capacitor C is 250 microfarads so equals 250 by 10 to minus 6 let's put that outside so C equals 250 by 10 to the minus 6 and the resistor R is equal to 6 ohms and we have some voltage over here let's write it as a phaser so VS with a tilde on top represented as a phaser and we're given some information about the circuit and asked to solve for pretty much everything else so the piece of information we're given is the current through the inductor is 6 cos 1000 T minus 60 degrees. Let's write that down. So um, let's go back to black. So IL, and I'll draw IL now, is equal to, well, let's draw it in the time domain. IL at T is equal to 6 cos of 1000 T minus 60 degrees. And what is IL? IL is the current going through the inductor. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll draw the current going down. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, then uh, that will come out. Well, it's actually not going to make much of a difference, but it will mean a phase shift of 180 degrees. Let's say it's pointing the other way, so I'll just put the arrow pointing down. Um, let's turn this IL into a phaser. So as a phaser, IL, so write IL, and it will have a tilde on top to say it's a phaser. A phaser is a complex number which represents a sinusoid, so the amplitude or magnitude of this complex number will be 6 and the angle will be 60 degrees, minus 60 degrees. Well, the question is what happened to the frequency here? Well, the frequency is gone. It's not encoded in the phaser. The phaser assumes that the same frequency is there through every source in the circuit and all we worry about is the amplitude 6 and the phase which is minus 60 and um, the frequency appears when we look at the elements of the capacitor and the inductor so let's look at that next um, so what the other information we have is you might remember from the lecture we had some formulae so it was uh, the impedance of a resistor is equal to R the impedance of a capacitor Z sub C is 1 over J omega C, where J is the square root of minus 1. Omega is the angular frequency of the voltage across the element, and C is the capacitance. And the impedance of the inductor is J omega L. Okay, let's attempt the first question, part A. Part A asks us to find what is V of S. So what is this source voltage given that we know all the impedances in the circuit and we know the current in the inductor is given by this phaser, uh, six, uh, amplitude 6 and phase of minus 60. Well let's work out the inductor impedance. So we will have um, ZL is equal to J omega L. What is omega? Well, omega is taken from here. So omega is 1000. So we will have J. And L is the inductance, so it's 8 by 10 to the minus 3. And we get J8. And that's ohms, but we're gonna, we don't need to write the units all the way through. 
So we're almost there. We have just about everything we need. We know what the current is through the inductor. We know what the impedance of the inductor is so we can calculate what the voltage is. And let's write that down. The expression that you'll need to do this is simply a variant of Ohm's law. So it's V is equal to I times, it's normally I times R, this is now I times Z for Ohm's law. Which gives Vs phaser is equal to I, which is, well, let's write it out first, IL by ZL. And why is that the case? Well, Vs, the same voltage is across all of these elements. They're all in parallel, so we have the same voltage across all. And this voltage across the inductor in particular is Vs plus minus is I times I or I sub L multiplied by Z sub L. Let's put the values in. So we'll have 6 at an angle of minus 60. And ZL is, well, it's J8. Now that seems a bit confusing. I've got two complex numbers multiplied together. And one is in polar form and the other is in Cartesian. Um, what do we want to do? Well, because we're multiplying them together, we should change them both into polar. So if we drew on the complex plane over to the side here somewhere, um, very crookedly, let's do that properly, uh, not much better, we would have this at a height of 8 in the imaginary direction, and this being the real, and the angle here is 90 degrees. This is J, J8, 0 real and 8 in the imaginary. So we could write that as the same as it's 8 at an angle of 90 degrees. So let's rewrite that here. So we have 6 minus 60 and 8 at an angle of 90 degrees. And multiplying them together we multiply the magnitude so we get 48 and <coughs> because they're multiplied we add together the angles so we end up with 30 degrees and it's a voltage remember this is Vs as a phasor so that's going to be volts 